Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb and happy Independence Day weekend if you happen to be watching this on the day that it drops. If not, happy Philippine Independence Month and all throughout the month we are actually participating in a campaign called Hashtag Damakolahiko which is, uh, it translates into I feel my ethnicity, I feel my heritage. Um, as with a lot of great Filipino words, there's no direct translation. And if you're, if you want to talk about translation and English Tagalog and that stuff, we actually just dropped a video about uh, the anime on Netflix called Trese. You can watch that. I'll put the link somewhere here. And uh, we, we dive a bit into that in that discussion. If you enjoyed watching Trese, you might enjoy watching that. Uh, that was our first video that we published in our series for the Makolahiko. The second one was one about pine robusta that was farmed in the La Union um, rainforest of Bagulin. So it's a Bagulin forest in La Union. And today we're going to be talking about another kind of coffee. And this one was actually sent to us by our friends over at um, Habitual. We did reach out to a number of people because we wanted to talk about Philippine coffees this weekend. And Habitual has labeled this as it says here in big orange uh, word, local. And the coffee itself reads as a Malipuño Liberica Batangas red honey. So that's the process. So it's a red honey process. Tasting notes, I'm gonna ignore that. I'm actually not gonna look at the tasting notes. Um, but the reason why I wanted to cover this coffee is because this, this uh, species of coffee is not Robusta or Arabica. This is a different species called Liberica. And Liberica, particularly Libericas that have been grown in Batangas and in Cavite, have really been what we've come to know as Baraco coffee in the Philippines. It's actually unique to our, um, to our geography. A huge chunk of it, I think more than 90%, is actually grown uh, right here on the island of Luzon. That's our local coffee. There's some of it growing in Malaysia. Um, I think there's a little in Indonesia, but by far the Philippines is the number one place where, um, where Liberica is farmed. So I asked the owner of, of Habitual if he would consider this to be a Baraco. And uh, let's talk about that after we brew the coffee. Let's jump right into brewing the coffee because I really wanna taste this again. We have a great calibration. Um, for how we think this should be brewed, and I want to share it with all of you guys. First, have a look at this coffee and see the size of the coffee beans. They're actually quite large compared to other coffee beans. And they have that very elongated um, shape that's very, very characteristic of Liberica and Baraco coffees. Our water today is at 96 degrees for brewing this coffee. It's a pretty standard temperature. And this time we are going to wash our paper filter to preheat the device and primarily that to saturate the, the filter as well so that we can really maximize the flavors that we're getting out of this particular coffee. After rinsing our filter, we've emptied out all of the water that was inside the carafe. And now we're gonna put in our coffee. If you can see here, the coffee is ground medium fine, which is my preferred texture grind size for pour overs for V60s. And we're gonna put that in there. I'm gonna take our trusty chopstick and just put a little dot in the center, give it a little stir. And that will distribute the coffee to have a little crater there in the middle. Now with our water temperature at 96 degrees, our ratio for this coffee is actually going to be shorter than our usual standard of 1 is to 15 ratio. So we're actually going to um, brew this at 1 is to 13. So we put in 15 grams of water and we're going to be putting in 195 uh, ml or grams of hot water at 96 degrees. Let's brew. For this kind of coffee and this kind of sweetness, I usually like to have an extended uh, bloom or pre-infusion time. I, the coffee did bloom, it did expand out. Uh, I think it might be relatively fresh. Yeah, this was, uh, this was roasted only two days ago. And I'm actually gonna let it sit all the way until 50, 58 seconds. And now I'm going to put in all the way until 190 grams of water. All 
All right, so we got to 100, 193, and I'm actually just gonna let that draw down. So we've actually done the whole pour over in just the pre-infusion, a long wait, and then we're gonna let it draw down. Um, I finished pouring at about one minute and uh, 30 seconds. Now, if you're gonna be doing a pour over like this, whether it be for a Liberica or for another coffee where you are dumping a large amount of water in, it's important to remember that your grind size really does have to be perfect or else it will choke. The fines will migrate to the top of the brew and settle and clog up your pour over. But I think that's actually gonna work towards our advantage with this coffee because I have tasted it before and it does have a very deep honey sweetness to it, um, which I'm expecting to be able to accentuate with this pour over. All right, so we are starting to see a stall at around two minutes 30. Uh, seconds, but it's still gonna be done by about three minutes and Yep, two minutes 48 no more liquid on top It's gonna give it a tap to let any remaining water drip down and that's our brew Let's give it a taste Mm. A nice acidity to it. Some fresh pineapple. Honey. Chestnuts, definitely there. Mm. There's like a... This is a red honey process. It is not the natural process, but it does have like a langka finish to it, which is very um, common of natural processed coffees, but this not being a natural processed coffee, being a honey processed coffee, um, that's quite unusual. And delicious. That's a clean coffee. That's a really clean coffee. Congratulations, habitual. Raf and team, you have done a great job. Cheers. Mm. Now, what I what I did ask Raf was, does he consider this to be a baraco? And he says no. Like he says that most baracos are, uh, he would characterize them as natural processed libericas. Um, but he said that it's complicated, and that's actually something that I've known for quite some time. Is that the concept of what a baraco is really is complicated. Um, but talking with Ralph, he, he really enlightened me a little bit about um, how things have gotten so convoluted there. You see, the situation with uh, with Baraco is because it's associated with kind of a flavor profile and an area. It's very similar to like the problems that we had identifying uh, wines in regions in the old world, in France and Italy and stuff, where wines were named after the places that they were grown. Whereas in the new world or in, in newer farms, newer vineyards, wine start to get named by their varietal. And that was a more specific way to talk about the flavor. In the case of Baraco, so much of what has come to be known as Baraco has been Liberica, but because it's so tied in with its location, Robusta really has come in and mixed with that. And people have been selling Robusta with that Baraco name, as long as it comes from that Batangas Cavite region. On top of that, according to Raf, there's an extra layer of confusion because uh, Liberica and Excelsa, which also grows in that area, tend to cro cross pollinate. And so the Liberica has been kind of feeding in <laughs> DNA into the Excelsa. And when that gets farmed, it gets processed. It also gets sold as Liberica. Uh, or it also gets sold as Baraco. And on top of that, Excelsa has now been reclassified to be part of the Liberica family. So it's very convoluted, it's very mugulo, but if you ask me, I think that Liberica from Batangas is Baraco. 
I do think that if we zoom in on Liberica, it being the one that really is grown here, and uh, let's just consider Excels as part of that since it's been reclassified in that family, since it is grown here in a way that it's not grown in other parts of the world, this is something that we can have that is unique. And what we're seeing here with the habitual roasted coffee is that if it is processed well and it is roasted well, it's delicious and it can compete with the best. I would put this up with a lot of specialty coffees that we're getting, a lot of the Arabic specialty coffee. And this also creates a new level of, of challenges because again, we are one of the few places in the world where you can get Liberica in this quantity. So as a result, there's a huge uh, effort to try and classify specialty Arabicas. There's a big effort to try and classify fine robustas, um, but Liberica, who's gonna work on it? Like, it's basically just our area, our region of the world where you can get them. So, you know, the only people who are gonna push this is us. And I tell you, this is a very, very Filipino flavor for coffee, especially for specialty coffee. So if you have a chance, do try this out. Um, before we go, let's try it out as an espresso and with milk. Eighteen grams in, thirty-eight ml out, or thirty-eight grams out. Brew time was fifty-eight seconds, including our ten-second pre-infusion and twenty-second pause. Not a lot of crema. Smell is pretty intense. Creamy. A lot of the. Nutty notes are gone. The chestnut note is gone. Tropical fruit has prevailed. And then there's an umami to it. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. It's a punchy coffee. Lots of fruit. Fermented deep wine flavors and really, a, really a, 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 an umami savory flavor to it. That's super interesting. All right, so we've tasted it as espresso. We've tasted it as a pour over. Let's taste it now with milk. So as the milk settles, we can see we've made a flat white with our uh, Liberica. And let's give it a taste. Mm. It doesn't cut through the milk like a lot of very acidic coffees. That is pleasant. It is fruity in the way that an Ethiopian is fruity. It is sweet. Um, I'll be honest, it's not the greatest Liberic I've ever tasted, but it is up there. It is really good. There's a level of sweetness and the complexity of fruit that is there. Um, I would need to cup it to give it a proper score, but would I classify this as specialty? Definitely, definitely. If this was... If this was on the hopper and they were offering this as espresso, I would probably order this over a lot of house blends. That is delicious. Mm. So what have we learned here today and all weekend? Um, I would say that, man, open your mind, open your eyes to the idea that, you know, to move away from the idea that Arabic is number one, right? If you've bought into that, I encourage you to try other things because there's a lot of great coffee out there that is not Arabica. And a lot of it is grown right here in Luzon. The coffee from yesterday, which is from Bagulin Forest in La Union, was a very good specialty Robusta from uh, grown right here on the island up in the north. This coffee today is another great non-Arabica coffee grown in the south at around 400 meters above sea level. 
the the forest in Bagulin, I'm sur I'll be surprised if it's anywhere above uh, 200 meters above sea level. So these are all lowland, delicious, great coffees that you should definitely taste. And if you haven't been able to try them, give them a try. I cannot urge you strongly enough. Support Philippine coffees, especially when they're as good as the ones that we've had this weekend. All right, I'd love to know your thoughts. Have you tasted this coffee? Have you tasted other um, coffees from these areas of these species? Have you tasted Great Robusta or Great Liberica, Great Excelsa? I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram. Follow on Instagram. I'm at Kosh on Instagram. Follow at Daily Drink Mag on Instagram and follow at Honeycomb Manila, our studio here in Double Dragon Plaza. And do check out that hashtag all month long. That's hashtag the Makolahiko. And that's how we're celebrating the different things about our heritage, about our ethnicity, the things that, that Filipinos make and taste and see. Celebrate with us, will you? All right. I wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys good health. I wish you guys great coffee. Peace.